Okay, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Reno Virtual College Fair. We're excited that you're here. Um, we're gonna wait just another minute or so, let all the students click the right buttons to get into our Zoom room. So we'll get started here in just a minute or so. Thanks for being here. Okay, well, I think we will go ahead and get started. Good evening again. Welcome to the Reno Virtual College Fair. We're excited that you're here. Um, we have a great group of colleges and universities and presenters for you this evening. So we're excited for you to learn a little bit more about these colleges that you're interested in. Just a few housekeeping announcements from me before we get started. First, your cameras and microphones are turned off, so don't worry, we can't see you or hear you. Hopefully you can see and hear us okay. If for some reason that changes, just send us a message using that Q&A button on your Zoom toolbar and we'll be happy to help troubleshoot that with you. Um, speaking of the Q&A button, that's really your best way to engage with our presenters this evening. So as you have questions throughout the session, feel free to submit those through that Q&A button on the Zoom toolbar. Um, we'll be answering those behind the scenes all throughout the session, so feel free to submit those either to a specific college that you're interested in or a general question that you would like everyone to kind of chime in on. I'm happy to address those either way. And it doesn't just have to be while that college is presenting. You're welcome to submit those all throughout the session to any college um, at any point. Um, don't forget, this is just one of many sessions being offered, so be sure to check the Stryscan website to sign up for any additional session, sessions you might be interested in. Um, as well as all the session recordings will be available on that same website within about a week or so. So before I turn it over to our presenters, I just wanted to show you our agenda for this evening. So we're at the bottom left-hand corner here, the session C1. So we are going to hear from Truckee Meadows Community College, University of Nevada, Reno, University of Nevada, Las Vegas, College of Southern Nevada, Boise State University, and the University of Alaska Fairbanks. And so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Truckee Meadows Community College to kick things off. Okay, hey, hello everyone. Hopefully you can all hear me now. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you guys so you should be able to see the presentation. Um, so my name is Amber Burrows and I'm from Truckee Meadows Community College, TMCC, um, here in lovely Reno, Nevada. I work in the Recruitment and Access Center and we're here to help you anytime you need us. Um, TMCC is a great community college. We offer everything from a skill certificate, which is like CNA, um, all the way up to bachelor's degree programs. Actually, we have three bachelor's degree programs as well. Um, anything with Associate of Arts, Associate of Science, tons of different options. Um, some of our popular degree programs, we have uh, biology, automotive, culinary arts, um, production systems. So we have tons of different things, over 160 different degree options for you. Um, one of the cool things about TMCC is that um, we're really affordable. Our average tuition and fees for a full-time student is about $2,910 um, for the year, so about $3,000 for the school year. Um, some of our cool programs that we have at TMCC, Jumpstart Dual Credit. So if you are currently um, a high school student right now wanting to take college classes, you can earn both high school and college credit with our dual credit program. And we have tons of different uh, tuition discounts available for you. Another cool program is Nevada Promise Scholarship, where we um, provide up to, it's almost free college tuition for students. Um, the first thing that you need to do is to apply by October 31st. Um, so apply by Halloween, and that way you're in the running to get the scholarship. Um, basically, as long as you meet the requirements and uh, deadlines that we have, you'll be able to get that scholarship. Um, so apply October 31st, big plug for that. Next is the Success First Summer Bridge program that we have. So that's a first year college experience program. It's a six week long summer bridge program um, that is totally free for students and you actually get a scholarship at the end of it as well. So if that sounds like something you're interested in um, after you leave your senior year, um, it's a perfect program to transition to college. Um, really simple steps to enroll for us actually. So our steps to enroll, you apply for admission, you complete your SOAR, which is our orientation that we have online and then you just register and pay for classes. Really simple. The application for admission actually is available right now for the fall 2021. There is no upfront fee, which is awesome. And it's super fast and easy to apply to TMCC. It takes about 10 minutes. Um, everyone's accepted to TMCC, so you don't have to be worried that you'll be rejected or anything like that. Um, we're very accepting to everybody and we want you to be able to pursue your educational goals. 
Next, just to notice that the fall semester enrollment starts in April and you don't pay until August, and then spring semester enrollment starts in November and you don't pay until January. Some of the recommended steps for success, so these are not um, required, but the recommended, of course, apply for financial aid, any college will tell you that, and also take a placement test if, if needed. So what is financial aid? You want to apply at FAFSA.gov. Um, fill out your FAFSA, FAFSA geez, which is the free application for federal student aid. Always remember that it's a free application. Okay. And then also TMCC has tons of different scholarship options available. So our scholarship foundation gives over half a million dollars. Um, oh, sorry, actually over, yeah, $500 million um, in scholarships. And so we have tons of different scholarships available for you guys. And I just said 500 million, 500,000, that's a million is correct. Anyways, um, so we also, if you need to take a placement test, you can go ahead and do that. Um, we accept ACT, SAT, or the AccuPlacer. And um, we also have alternate pathways to help you place into math and English classes. Some of our support programs that are available, academic advising, counseling, uh, disability resource center, anything that you need to be successful at TMCC. And since we can't do very many um, in-person tours right now, we're offering our TMCC a virtual tour. So you can tour any of our four campuses that we have. And um, lastly, if you want to uh, contact us at all, recruitment at tmcc.edu. Thank you. Great, thank you. Okay, next up, we are going to go to the University of Nevada, Reno. Hi everyone, I hope everyone's having a good night. I'm about to share my screen right here. Hopefully everyone can see my screen. Uh, my name is Efren Gonzalez. I'm an admissions and recruitment coordinator for the University of Nevada, Reno. I work here in the, um, in the area. So if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to stop by the university and get your questions answered. A couple of history about the university. Um, this is a, a very old building on campus. We were established in 1874. We are um, an institution, a tier one institution. So out of, of 3,000 universities, you know, we rank in the top percent. Our student to faculty ratio is 18 to one. We have around 20,000 students. We have a beautiful library with over 400 computers and a ton of resources for students. We have an amazing uh, gym that opened up about two years ago with over 120 drop-in classes. We have over 140 majors at the university within these subsections right here. If you wanna take just a quick glance, you can see all of the different majors that the university offers. So there's definitely something for all students at the University of Nevada in Reno. Our newest facility is going to be the University Arts Building with some beautiful places for fine arts students, for graphic design students, for music majors, fine arts majors. Pretty amazing place with a museum. And then the newest building that opened about six months ago is going to be the new engineering building, the William Pennington Engineering. So we focus a lot on the sciences, but also in the art. The Student Union with great places to eat, a lot of really fun events, over 250 clubs at the university. We also have some pretty great athletics, some really fun games. Every single game you go to at the university is going to be free. The Reno area is also pretty amazing, of course, really great things to do around the area. Tahoe, just 45 minutes away, experience all four seasons. Um, I really love Reno, so um, hopefully you guys can tell how much I love it. The application is now open, so you can apply to the university by going to unr.edu slash apply. We're not going to be on the Common App. We're not going to be anywhere else, so this is the only place that you can apply. We're all going to, um, all we're going to ask for is for your official high school transcript, okay? So we're going to ask for a $60 application fee, and we are also going to ask for your official high school transcript to admit you. If you meet the requirements of a 3.0 GPA in your core academic classes, you will be admitted 100%. If you do not meet the 3.0 GPA, we do have test waivers, so optional. You don't have to submit your test scores, but you can. And if you have those scores right there of a 22 or an 1120, you will be admitted as well. Cost of tuition, you're looking roughly about $3,633 every single semester for five classes. We want to graduate in four years, so we want to make sure that you're taking five classes every single semester. You multiply that by two, you're looking around $7,267 per year for tuition, not including, of course, the residency. Several different things that you can do to receive financial aid to get a lot of big, a lot of the tuition paid off, including filling out the FAFSA and getting the Pell Grant. The Nevada Guarantee, which means that if you receive the Pell Grant through FAFSA, we'll cover all of your tuition plus textbooks. So make sure to fill out the FAFSA and if you qualify for the Pell Grant, you qualify for the Nevada Guarantee. So all of that tuition is going to be taken care of. As you saw here, 
a little bit more. We have university scholarships between $500 to $8,000. You need to apply to the university and you need to find the scholarship application in your My Nevada account. And you'll be able to apply for these. You're not required, there's no certain GPA, there's no certain test scores, but there is a couple of questions on there that you do have to answer like an essay. The Millennium Scholarship for students who graduate in the state of Nevada, of course, you're gonna get uh, $2,400 per year if you go to the university and the Public Education Foundation has some scholarships for Las Vegas students. We also have some pretty cool residence halls. The newest ones include Great Basin Hall, Peavine Hall, and the Nevada Living and Learning Community, which is the residence hall that I stayed in my freshman year, which was a lot of fun. And that's pretty much it. Here's my contact information right there. If you guys want to take a picture of it, you're more than welcome to do so. But thank you guys so much. If you have any questions, I'll answer them in the chat. Awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, next up, we are going to go to the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Hey, everybody. My name is Kevin Crawford, and I'm with the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Let, my, let me share my screen with you. Okay, so here at UNLV, we are different, daring, and diverse. This year, UNLV is actually ranked the second most diverse university in the country. So if you come down to Las Vegas, there's a very good chance that you will both be able to find your group of people and expand your worldview all at the same time. We do offer over 300 undergraduate and graduate programs here at UNLV. I encourage you to go into our website, unlv.edu slash academics slash degrees to explore all of them. Some of the ones I like to brag about is hospitality, which is rated the number one hospitality program in the country. We also have a top 10 school of music and our master's program for nursing is also a top 10 program. Some interesting majors that I like to boast about are our engineering and entertainment design major in which students can design engineering feats for the entertainment industry. Also our PGA golf management program is a very unique program. I also encourage students to look specifically into the health sciences, urban affairs and liberal arts colleges for what I like to call discovery majors, which are majors you may not even know exist until you start to look into them in a bit more detail. Here at UNLV, we are an R1 research institution, so we are in the top 3% of research institutions across the country. We also have a lot of things to do outside of the classroom as well. Our football team, UNLV's football team, will be playing in the new Allegiant Stadium, so where the Oakland Raiders now play as the Las Vegas Raiders. We will be playing there on home games, and our first home game this season is on Halloween against the University of Nevada, Reno. So hopefully everybody on this call will be able to at least tune in and be rooting for one team or the other there. We also do have over 400 clubs and organizations, so we are a very involved campus, and many of our students are in ethnic or religious clubs and organizations, as well as academic, philanthropic, and as well as social clubs and organizations. If you visited Las Vegas before, you know that our city has a lot more than just the Las Vegas Strip. So I encourage you, if you come to Las Vegas, to take advantage of everything. Even during the winter, when our weather is a perfect 55 degrees every day in the winter, you can drive just 45 minutes away and experience snow on Mount Charleston. When it comes to our admission requirements, they're going to be the exact same as the University of Nevada, Reno. So that 3.0 weighted core GPA or the SAT or ACT scores. The ACT and SAT scores will be optional and we will only look at those if you don't maintain that 3.0 weighted core GPA. When it comes to cost, our in-state students get a great bargain at about $8,600 per year in comparison to what the out-of-state students pay, which is about three times more than that. We do also offer several scholarships. We have our freshman merit-based scholarships, which are currently under construction as we try to find a way to award students without taking their ACT or SAT scores into consideration due to COVID-19. We also accept the Millennium Scholarship at UNLV as well, which would significantly reduce your cost. And all of these scholarships are stackable on top of each other. So if you get one and you get the other one, you could add both of them and subtract them from your tuition. We also offer something called UNLV Tuition Plus, which would cover your tuition plus books and fees. This similarly to the University of Nevada Reno's, you can be eligible for if you are eligible for the federal Pell Grant as determined by FAFSA, 
We also allow students to complete the alternate need form. If you are ineligible to complete the FAFSA due to your citizenship status, maybe you're undocumented or have DACA or TPS, we have that alternate need form for you as well. When it comes to some of our deadlines, November 1st is our priority deadline. What I mean by priority deadline is for scholarship consideration. So these are offered on a priority basis. So the sooner you apply, the better chance you have to be considered for any of those scholarships that I just mentioned. What we need to receive by November 1st for your consideration is your UNLV application and either the FAFSA or alternate need form, depending on what you are able to fill out. In order to apply, all you need to do is go online. It's unlv.edu slash admissions slash freshman, and you can go ahead and complete that application. We will need your high school transcript as well, and we can accept your ACT or SAT scores if you don't meet that 3.0 GPA. We will accept applications up until June 1st, so if you are not going to be considered for scholarships, you can wait up until June 1st to apply, but I really recommend you try and get that application within the next couple of weeks. And then please follow us, unlv.today slash events is where you can go to schedule all sorts of virtual events. We are currently doing uh, our virtual events. And this weekend, we are doing some FAFSA completion workshops as well as the UNLV application. So you can get in there and complete those with us. And also you could always follow us on Instagram at UNLV admissions. My name is Kevin Crawford, and I hope to hear from you all soon. Thank you. Great, thank you, Kevin. Okay, next up, we are going to hear from the College of Southern Nevada. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Vishal Sharma. I'm the manager of student recruitment at the College of Southern Nevada. Let me just share my screen real quick and then we'll get started. Okay, so the College of Southern Nevada is the largest and most diverse college in the state of Nevada. Uh, we have an average student, uh, average student age of 27 years old an average class size of 20. So that's less than the number of people here in this presentation today. Uh, a 27 to one student to faculty ratio. We're also designated as a minority serving institution and Nevada's first Hispanic serving institution. So just a little bit about CSN. We are located all over the city of Las Vegas. We have three main campuses. Um, our North Las Vegas campus where I'm normally working during normal work, uh, normal working conditions is uh, located not too far from the uh, Fremont Street experience in downtown Las Vegas. Our Charleston campus, which is located about a mile and a half down from the strip, uh, kind of nestled right halfway between the Red Rock Canyon and the Las Vegas strip. And then our Henderson campus down here, the yellow arrow, this is going towards Hoover Dam. And then all the little blue arrows you see is our satellite campuses throughout the Las Vegas Valley. We have a couple others that you can't really see on the screen here as well. Uh, all in all, we have 10 campuses, counting our three main campuses, all of our satellite campuses as well. And then we have our online campus. So we have 26 programs that are 100% online that you would never have to step on campus for in order to earn your degree with CSN. We're a public institution. We were founded in 1971. Our North Las Vegas campus was our original campus. Um, one out of every three college graduates in the state of Nevada are earning their degree from CSN. And one out of every 82 jobs in the region here in Clark County and the Las Vegas Valley is held by a CSN alumni. And as we all know, we're, we're all Nevada, well, most of us are all from Nevada here in this uh, presentation today. Um, as Las Vegas goes, as the Strip goes, the economy in Nevada goes. Um, CSN is at the forefront of that. We uh, pump over 1.2 billion into the Las Vegas economy every year. So what can you study when you come to CSN? Well, we offer over 200 different degree programs, uh, all split into our certificate programs, uh, our associate degree programs, as well as some bachelor's degree programs that we offer here. Uh, when you apply to CSN, you're not actually going to choose a major, you're gonna choose an area of study. There's 11 areas of study that you see here on your screen. So basically what you'll do is you'll choose one of these areas of study, you're required to meet with an academic advisor during your onboarding process. And that's where you'll be able to choose a very specific degree program. 
So right now we're just choosing an area that you're interested in working in. And then basically when you meet with your academic advisors, you'll be able to have a, a more specific one-on-one -on -one conversation about what you're looking at doing and they'll recommend the best degree program for you. If you're interested in a trade or an apprenticeship program, we have those that are shorter programs that are direct hires for a lot of hands-on trade organizations throughout the Las Vegas Valley and throughout the state of Nevada as well. And then we offer, offer also offer adult education and ESL courses as well. Most of those are free to the Las Vegas community. So a couple of programs that are very important here on your screen, um, due to the situation of COVID-19, we wanted to find a way to get students more connected with current resources on campus. And since they can't really step foot on campus, we started a program called Coyote Clout. It's a program that's connecting students with a college readiness program here on campus, uh, ran by our outreach ambassadors. And what they do is they connect you with different students and organizations and uh, different mentors that you'll have on campus when you step foot at CSN. And this program is completely free. All you need to do is scan the little QR code on the top right, and you'll be able to sign up on our interest form and our outreach ambassadors will be in touch with you within a few days. Uh, the workshops run from November all the way until you graduate from high school. So there's gonna be a lot of different opportunities for you and different topics that are, got, that are going to be covered regarding resume building, time management, preparing for resume, uh, preparing for finals and midterms, handling stress at the college level. So you're gonna get a lot of free information there that's gonna be very beneficial for your development. Um, just as mentioned earlier, we are also a Nevada Promise School as well. Um, you do need to apply by Halloween. So if you're looking at relocating down to Las Vegas, uh, the cost of living is a little bit cheaper here. So you could potentially relocate and still use the Nevada Promise Scholarship to help you pay for your tuition uh, and attend CSN nearly for free. And although you're mostly up in Reno, uh, we are offering virtual one-on-one -on -one appointments with any of our recruitment team as well as virtual tours. So if you go to the csn.edu slash campus tours, you'd be able to do any of our three campuses virtual tours. Um, if you're interested in meeting with a recruiter one-on-one -on -one and gaining more information about CSN, the programs we offer, uh, what types of funding we offer, we have all of those different opportunities for you um, and you can set up an appointment with any of us. Um, if you're interested in getting in touch with the recruitment department, the student recruitment at csn.edu uh, email address that you see on your screen. I do oversee that email address, so I'll be responding to you directly or I'll be connecting you personally to a recruiter. And then all of the, the social media that you see on the bottom right, um, those are all student ran. So if you're looking at getting a student perspective of what CSN is like, and you can even DM any of them and ask questions, our students will respond to you. So if you want to hear from a student, you can reach us on social media. All of the phone lines that you see, they are being answered. Uh, we are still available via phone. We're working like normal business hours. So please get a hold of us. We're here to help you. If you have any more questions, I'll be available in the Q&A. Have a great night, everyone. Great, thank you. Okay, next up, we are going to go to Boise State University. All right, hello everybody. My name is Savannah Allmet and I am a Boise State Admissions Counselor. Um, I actually was a student at Boise State University though. So prior to moving to Boise, I lived in Gardnerville, Nevada, and then I moved to Boise State to go to school. So I absolutely loved my experience at Boise State. I'm really excited to be able to share a little bit more of it today with all of y'all too. So I'll go ahead, jump in. On Boise State's campus, we have around 26,000 students. And so of that, the undergraduate population, it actually sits at probably closer to around 17,000 students. And so what's really nice is that moving from a fairly small town or so, um, I really wanted to be at a place where I still had that sense of community, but also at the same time, I was getting to meet new people every single day. And Boise State really offers that to its students for D1 University, not too big and not too small. We tend to sit right there in the middle. We like to call ourselves that Goldilocks today. Now, not only is our campus incredible, but also we sit right in the heart of the uh, capital of Idaho, which is awesome. Idaho is so much more than potatoes. I know that that's kind of the thought that everybody has, right? And so we actually have one of the best downtowns in the United States. We're on the top 10 list for a bunch of really cool new things. Um, we're on the top 10 list for best new city for young professionals because we have so many new businesses that are moving in. And not only that, but there's tons of really great restaurants for students to go and try out. I know that my um, years were spent trying out a whole bunch of new like coffee shops and ice cream, all that good stuff. And then also we're one of the safest cities in the United States. 
as well as one of the best cities for outdoor adventure too. So you're going to find tons of great things like lots of hiking trails, the Greenbelt, which is a 26 mile running, biking, walking path that runs right through our campus and then all through our city too. Um, we also have a river that runs right through our campus. So you can go floating down the river with your friends. There's always so much to do. And as a student, I was never bored. That was something that I always really appreciated about this university was that not only did it offer amazing academics and awesome like clubs, that kind of stuff, but at the same time, I had a place that really became my home away from home too. And might I mention, this is only a 15 minute walk away from our campus. You just cross that bridge there, it's called Friendship Bridge. Um, and as soon as you cross it, you're pretty much right in downtown Boise. You end up right near the Boise Zoo, and then you can go and find all this incredible stuff that they have to offer. Now, as far as majors, minors, certificates, all that kind of stuff goes, we have over 189 different majors, minors that you guys can pick from at Boise State University. So these are our top 10 majors of Boise State. Some of our most popular ones actually include business, engineering, health sciences, and education at Boise State. But there are so many other ones that you can also pursue anywhere from the arts all the way to political science and criminal justice. And if you're somebody who loves music, we have a really wonderful music program at Boise State University. There are so many different ways to not only pursue one ma or major that you're passionate about, but also maybe pursue multiple majors or maybe multiple minors, all that kind of stuff. And so I actually had a friend, for example, who she was really interested in doing nursing. But she also had a passion for VR technology and engineering and that kind of stuff. So her and a few other students who also had this shared passion, they actually worked together to create a program at Boise State where nurses could go in and practice putting catheters in their patients without actually having to do so, which was really cool. It actually won a whole bunch of awards all over the United States. And so I always tell students, please know that you don't only have to pursue one major, you can pursue multiple different majors, minors, and certificates here too. Not only that, we have a really great internship program at Boise State University. We are top three in the Pacific Northwest for our internship program. A lot of that is due to the fact that Boise is one of the fastest growing cities in the United States right now. So lots of really great opportunities are growing with our students as our city grows too. And then of course we have over 200 plus clubs for our students to be able to get involved with anywhere from the s'mores club to sororities and fraternities. We've got a little bit of everything for everyone. So please know that whether you're interested in religious clubs, academic clubs or the like, you're going to be able to find something that you'll be able to pursue and be passionate about. And then of course, campus housing it is first come first serve as a student and you're not required to live on campus as a first year. I always encourage students to check out our housing page because they do a lot of different virtual tours that you can go in and check out. And then I wanna talk about that application process. So you do wanna visit apply.boisestate.edu. Get that application fee into us, it is $50. If you need an application fee waiver, please reach out to me. And then of course, send in those official transcripts. We are not considering test scores this year for admission purposes or for scholarship purposes. Um, we do have two automatic scholarships. You don't have to fill out anything extra in order to receive these. Basically, as long as you get all of your application materials into us, so your Boise State application, as well as your transcripts in our office by December 15th, and you'll be automatically considered for these scholarships here. The Bowie scholarship does bring tuition down to about in-state tuition, which is awesome. And then you can find extra scholarships on both our private scholarship page and our general scholarship application. Now, um, we actually are open for campus visits. We allow 10 students per visit. And if that's something that you would like to do, you can always find that on our website as well as signing up for some of those virtual um, sessions that we also host. Again, my name is Savannah Almond. This is some contact information here. And then I always say, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. It will allow you the chance to check us out a little bit more and find out a lot more about our students. Thank you guys. Awesome, thanks Savannah. Okay, and last but not least, we are going to go to the, the University of Alaska Fairbanks. Hey, y'all, how's it going? Uh, yes, uh, last but certainly uh, also the coldest. Um, I, uh, I feel particularly lucky to be here with all these folks from uh, warm other places. Uh, and so uh, UAF is going to be for the adventurous folk who are looking for a little bit colder weather. Uh, my name is Andrew. I'm a regional admissions counselor at UAF. Uh, I am also a UAF alum. I lived in Fairbanks for a few years, uh, both on and off campus. Uh, and so uh, I can definitely follow up with you and talk with you about my student experience a little bit more, find some highlights as we're going. Uh, but we have a lot to talk about, so let's jump in. So UAF is a small public research university, and we're based up in the, in the interior of Alaska, so up here towards the middle of the state. 
Now, being up here, uh, you're going to be experiencing a particularly unique living environment, and uh, it's going to be complete with snowy winters, uh, varying amounts of sunlight, uh, temperature lows of negative 40 or negative 50, and temperature highs of 80 or 90. That's right. During the summer, the midnight sun returns, and everybody gets outside and enjoys some summer heat. Uh, you're also going to have a chance to engage with Alaskan wildlife, uh, see moose right on campus, uh, and even see the aurora borealis or the northern lights also right from campus. Uh, I did both of these things. Cannot recommend them enough. So UAF is really going to offer you all the best parts of college that you're looking for, uh, but with a little bit of a twist because we're in the farthest north U.S. city. So you're going to live in a residence hall. You're going to have, you know, your dining halls on campus, your cafes on campus, uh, your, you know, student rec center, everything like that. Uh, we'll have movie nights, karaoke nights, uh, open mic nights, uh, all right on campus. Uh, and then uh, we, of course, have student traditions too, but you'll notice our student tradition is getting a photo outside of uh, at the temperature sign when the temperature is uh, negative 40 below. I also took my photo in front of the temperature sign at negative 40. I kept my clothes on. Uh, these students chose to strip down to swimsuits, uh, but I am chicken, so it'll just be entirely up to you when you get up there. Uh, UAF is also a two-hour drive north of Denali National Park, the tallest peak in the United States. Uh, and so adventure is always right on campus or just off campus, a short drive away. And it's really unlike anything you've ever seen before. So just a couple highlights about what we have to offer for you. UAF does actually offer 11 bachelor's degrees entirely online. And those online degrees are going to be offered at the in-state tuition rate. And I'll get to tuition in a second. So since UAF is a, a relatively small university, we have just over 5,400 students living on campus and a 10 to 1 student to professor ratio. You're going to be experiencing uh, all the benefits of, say, a smaller liberal arts college. So uh, tightly knit community, smaller classes, one on one time with professors and classmates. You're really going to get to know the people at UAS campus and you're going to get to know the people in Fairbanks, too, because we're a small town of about 90,000 people. And there's a lot of overlap between campus and the Fairbanks community. Uh, however, you are also going to get uh, the funding support and resources of a larger public research university because UAF is a land, sea, and space grant university. We are a world leader in climate change and Arctic research. Uh, so we really, really have uh, an amazing amount of uh, facilities and opportunities on a relatively small campus, which means the opportunities are a little bit less competitive. Uh, we also know that Alaska is far away and that college is expensive. So we offer WUI for all. So just by being from Nevada, you qualify for WUI. You just have to check off on your application that you want it and you've got it. No GPA requirement or anything like that. We also offer in-state tuition for military and veterans and their dependents. And we have a lot of other general scholarships and merit-based scholarships for you. So at UAF, uh, you really are gonna find your major in so much more. Here's kind of a list of our popular and more unique majors, as well as our degree pathways. We offer everything from an occupational endorsement or certificate through associates and bachelor's programs, all the way up to master's and PhDs. And so uh, you actually um, can uh, stay, in your, stay in Fairbanks and go to UI for grad school if you so choose. Uh, but like I said, you're going to find much more than your major. If you come to UAF, if you move to Alaska, uh, you're going to be gathering stories and experiences that will make you the most interesting person in the room. And when you go to that job interview after graduating from UAF, uh, you're going to stand out. You're going to be interesting to the person asking you questions because you did something bold and adventurous and you lived in Alaska. So STEM majors are going to be particularly uh, popular at UAF. And that is, again, because, as I mentioned, we are a big research university. So, for example, if you're a mechanical engineer or an electrical engineer or an aerospace engineering minor, you will get to work at Poker Flats Research Range, our private rocket launch site. That's right, we are the only university in the world to have our own private rocket launch site. If you're a wildlife and biology, wildlife biology and conservation major, you'll get to work with musk oxen and reindeer right on campus at our large animal research station and help uh, prepare you for applying for vet school and even earn your wildlife certification during the program if you wanna be a park ranger or game warden. Uh, so these, these are the numbers of, uh, these are our tuition numbers. So notice WUI tuition is going to be just over 13,000 and in state. Now keep in mind under 10,000 in state tuition rate. That'll be for uh, if you're the dependent of military or a veteran, or if you take your degree online, 
Uh, we also offer NanoClez, that is our merit-based scholarship, and you're considered for that upon admission into UAF. And I'm getting near the end here, but uh, just some highlights on Mubi. Uh, again, if you're from Nevada, just check off on your application that you'd like to be considered for Mubi, and you will receive Mubi. Uh, the number for tuition, fees, housing, meal plan is just under $24,000. And remember, that is before financial aid and other scholarships. Applications are open. Our application process is very straightforward and simple. No essays. We don't ask you for your test scores. We just need that high school transcript, a $50 fee, and please apply by June 15th. That is the last chance for you to be considered for the Nano Pledge, our merit-based scholarship. And again, my name is Andrew. I'm an admissions counselor. I'm a proud UAF alum. I was an out-of-state student. I'm originally from Ohio and moving to Alaska was one of the best things I ever did. Please reach out and visit us virtually. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Andrew. Okay, well, we have a few extra minutes left in our session. So I'm going to ask our presenters, if you all want to come back on camera, um, I'm going to throw one more question at you to give you all another minute or so to respond. Um, but if you want to share a favorite tradition on your campus or a favorite experience that your students can look forward to, um, something fun just to round out the sessions. So we'll just go in the same order we started with earlier. So Amber, we'll start with you. Okay, so one fun thing about TMCC actually is that we have a new soccer team, which is really neat, a new competitive soccer team. Um, we're the, the lizards, the mighty lizards. Uh, our mascot is Wizard the Lizard. So I think that's a cool fun fact about TMCC. <laughs> For the University of Nevada, Reno, um, in the beginning of the school year, we have this super random event that happens late at night. It's um, Wolf It Down Pancakes. So at 11 o'clock at night, you know, the student government starts producing mass pancakes and, you know, bacon or whatever. And somehow the whole campus shows up to get these, you know, semi-good pancakes at 11 o'clock at night. But the mascots are out there. There's music playing. It's like a big party. And, and I think the biggest reason why the university does that is because students need a reason to you know, mingle with each other and to kind of get to know each other, break the ice a little bit. So really fun tradition that it's not just for the freshmen, it's, you know, an every year type of tradition. Really fun. At UNLV, we have something called Premier UNLV, which is like half EDM concert, half dance party, half food food festival, half carnival. And at the end of it, all of the students get together and hold up a glow stick. And we put freshman students all gathered together and spell out a U. And then sophomore students all gathered together and spell out an L. And then, or U-N-L-V, sometimes I can't even spell. And then we get a drone shot. We lit, light up fireworks in the background. We have the strip in the back. So students can hang up a picture of themselves in the U and the N-L-V throughout all four years. So they want to keep coming back and participating in that and interacting with their peers. So Premier U-N-L-V, definitely one of our greatest traditions. Uh, it's a little tricky at CSN because we have three main campuses. So uh, we actually do this welcome barbecue uh, at the beginning of every semester, pre-COVID. -pre um, and so, you know, if you're willing to make the drive, you could get like three free meals for the week because they all happen in one week. So uh, it's a lot of food, actually. And they actually get it catered from some of the same caterers that are um, doing everything on the strip. So there's there's some big name companies that come out and give students free food. Um, and they're, they're happening all around town and we do that twice a year. So uh, six free meals on us. I would say for Boise State, it has to be the first week float. So that's one of my like favorite activities that we all got to do like first as a first year. And then of course, every year after that, you always join. Um, and basically this is just like one day of the week when everybody first gets there. I let you guys all know the Boise River actually runs right through our campus. And so when everybody gets there, it's the summertime. Um, and they bus all of the students down to the start of it at Barber Park. And then everybody is just floating the river that whole day. And so you just like catch students just hanging out on the side of the river, um, floating down. I think it's like one of the best ways to like get a feel for like what Boise State is actually about because like students are just hanging out, having a good time, like just chilling by the river. And then obviously the floating is always a good time too. So that's my favorite tradition to all of our students. Uh, so at University of Alaska Fairbanks, my favorite tradition is called Starvation Gulch and it is a giant bonfire. Uh, but the bonfire is not made of what you typically think. Uh, student organizations 
and uh, different departments on campus get together in September, right at the start of classes, and build a giant wooden infrastructures, uh, the biggest of which are 20 by 20 feet. And uh, we light them all on fire, and the university fire department keeps us all safe and manages the fires as students kind of just uh, get hot cocoa and grilled cheeses and some UAF uh, swag uh, and hang out with their friends and watch the bonfires. It's kind of like a, like a handing of the torch and kind of starting of the new college season. Um, I think originally when it started back in like the 1920s, the fires did not have restrictions on how large they could be. And then in the 1980s, when people started thinking about things a little bit, it got restricted to 20 by 20 feet. So now the fires are a little bit more tame, but uh, still safe and still fun. That's awesome. Okay, thank you all for sharing. I appreciate it. Um, so I'm going to share my screen one last time. And just to the students who attended tonight, thank you so much for joining us. Hopefully you learned a little bit more about these colleges and universities that you're interested in. Um, when you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. If you don't mind taking a minute to complete that for us, we'd really appreciate any feedback that you have. Don't forget to check the StriveScan website, sign up for any additional sessions you might be interested in, as well as all of the session recordings will be on that same website within about a week or so. So again, have a good evening. Uh, we'll see you soon and have a good one. Thanks, everyone.